Today we want to give you a quick instruction on how to put our acoustical sound box for your cell phone together so that you can make that quick and easy. We're going to try to do a quick video. You'll get a box, depending on how many you buy, roughly this size with its packing ticket. Inside the box you'll find the cellophane wrapped components as well as a hardware bag. Inside of the hardware bag you will find your glue, your sandpaper, a drill bit, and little feet for the sound box. We have a drill bit, your glue, and sandpaper, and a little bag of four feet. When you open your kit, you'll find it wrapped in cellophane. We try to keep it completely wrapped to control the humidity with the piece so it doesn't pick up or lose moisture. The components are fairly thin, so you want to take care and not leave it sit on top of a hot radiator or something like that. Primarily two main components and our accent strips. You do want to carefully sand the interior. By carefully, I mean thoroughly sand the interior. You want to get the fuzz off and bring it down to a pretty smooth polish. And I recommend taping off your blue surfaces, which are these little flats, and then finishing your interior first. You want a nice slick surface. The slicker it is, the less your sound will be diffused. Little accent strips. On this one you'll notice I just kind of played with it and put a little wedge shape on the end of them. You can play with that and get creative so that yours is unique compared to anyone else's. You can glue them on, you can leave them square, you could flush them up if you chose to, or you could create your own little edge detail on that piece. The top obviously has the hole in it for your phone. In the end, it'll lay on top like this. You know, we have to glue all those surfaces. All right, so when you get your pieces all gathered and you're ready to go and you've laid them out the way you'd like them, the walnut strip will get glued on. What I like to do is put a little bit of glue on, rub it back and forth, get it flush on the ends, and leave the walnut just a little bit proud. And in just a few moments, that's going to stick and stay pretty firm for you. Turn around, you do the same thing with your walnut strip on the other side. You rub it back and forth, and as it firms up, again, you can still maneuver it. Just let it stick out a little bit on the outside of the box, so when you sand it, you can sand it nice and flush, and all saw marks and chatter marks will disappear. As that's sanded, then put a light coat of glue on the bottom section flat and this bottom section flat. Turn it over and carefully place it and flush your ends. Now that glue is going to act as tack to a certain extent. This will give you time to remove a piece of tape, pinch it together, and run your tape over it. I have clear tape, I can see what it is. And you'll notice you can still maneuver that walnut from inside. Don't worry about being super tight right yet. Let's get it locked in place. And you can simply slide your fingers in to make sure that accent strip, in this case walnut, is just standing a little proud on the outside. Tape your front corner in the same fashion. Now that you have it, double check everything that it hadn't set up too quickly yet. You will have to work somewhat quickly. And just make sure the walnut's slightly out. You can check your surfaces, make sure everything's flush the way you want it. You can do a little bit of sanding when you're done, but it's best to get it as far along as you can. Now I'm going to take a longer piece of tape, and I'm going to press right down 
I'm going to bring it over to the edge of my table and I'm just going to pull down on it and rub it on my side and then chuck, tuck it underneath. And now this one, I'm just going to stretch it just a little bit and tuck it. Now that stretching action is going to act like a clamp and pull that piece down and then do the same thing to the back side. Lift it up, pinch it, make sure everything stayed where you wanted it, and then just stretch your tape a little bit as you push it on. Same thing on the other side. And then you can run one right through the middle. I would run one through the middle just to make sure. No sense trying that later. You had a little bit of a hill there that didn't sink for you, a little hump. Again, I'm just stretching it gently. I'm not breaking the tape. And now your box is pretty solid. You shouldn't hear any rattling. If you need to make any fine adjustments, do them now. That glue will have already started to set up. You're not going to move it much, so you want it to be pretty much where you want it when you get there. After you've gone that far, let that sit aside for a couple hours and get good and hard. Generally, tight bond will dry within a half hour to where it holds, but using the tape method, not heavy clamping, it's pay to let it sit just a little bit longer. Give it at least an hour. When you're done, that's dry. We've given you a drill bit. You can test it in an old piece of wood if you have any around. We have tested it here. You're going to lay out and put a hole gently. You're going to use tape on your drill bit. Put a piece of blue tape on it. That'll help you judge the depth. And you just want it to be a little bit deeper than the pin on the end of the foot. And you can run a few layers around. You're just gonna, it's not going to stop your drill bit from going in, but it will give you the depth that you want to drill to. And if you notice, you can get right into the corner and not go through your box. If you go through because you just slipped too much or something, it's not the end of the world, you can fill it. But generally speaking, you're going to come out right on the edge and just go in deep enough to tap your foot in with a little bit of glue on it. You do your sanding, clean it up nice, and your box will be assembled. And then spend your time getting a nice finish on it, and you'll be good to go.